This is the video review for the Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class bludgeon figure. And this guy, he is very, very nice. I love his tank mode. It looks just like a tank. The turret rolls, it does not go up. It, uh, the, the turret turns, but does not go up, but it doesn't need to just because this thing looks badass. The, the only problem with it really is are these orange treads back here and the orange up here, but I'm more than willing to forgive the orange for what the orange does to this guy's robot mode. It makes him look badass. So, he rolls okay. Turret turns. It's a very nice looking, very cohesive, and just overall very, very nice tank mode. And the only problem with it actually is that this bit right here is a little bit gummy. It's made of soft plastic and it sort of falls. But the thing is, is that it's also a little bit miscolored, but the thing is, this turns into Bludgeon's giant katana. And honestly, without the katana without the katana in, this guy's more of a tank. And the reason why is because when the tank's moving at high speed over rough terrain, where it's uh, bumping up and down, the turret really needs to be shorter than the treads, because otherwise, the turret would just jam into a hill and bend and break off and make the uh, tank unusable. So, when his sword is in, he is what is known as a as an artillery piece, which is a long-range mobile cannon that's designed to move very slowly and cautiously to get to where it needs to go. So, I don't mind that this piece is a little bit gummy, since really that's just clever storage for that big katana. So, to transform this guy, is it's pretty neat what happens. He's a very interesting transformer. First, pop up this skirt piece down here, and then pull these pieces right here out of the way. And then you will untab the treads down here, up here, down here, and up here. Then you can bend these pieces out. These side pieces for the tank, these will become the, tre the legs. And then, pull this flap up, rotate this black piece around, keeping everything out of the way, and it will clip into place. Then you'll rotate these burgundy pieces that house the legs inward. And it'll snap into place. Then rotate the legs so that the bottom orange side of the treads are pointed forward. Fold these pieces back. And then fold these parts out and rotate down the feet. Sometimes the This piece right here, the heel spur, will get caught on the hinge. It's That's actually kind of annoying. And then these pieces just hang off to the side. It's sort of like, um, this guy's a samurai vibe to him. And then, he's getting pretty big. Rotate him up. You'll take these up here and split them. And that will allow you to collapse this entire thing in, which will shorten them down, make them a lot less top-heavy, and reveal the head. What you'll do next is take these and sort of shove them into his shoulders, so that'll help get them out of the way. And then you will unplug his arms from these orange bits up here, rotate down these orange bits, pull the arms out, Fold out the hands. Make sure this is flat. And then I just keep this at an angle upwards like that, the turret.
and then these can sit inwards more. But I prefer to keep his shoulders sort of at an angle that keeps his arms out of the way of everything better and looks a bit more dynamic. And that, I fold this piece down, and that is bludgeon in robot mode. <coughs> it's a very nice transformation, very clever, very well done. Has great alt mode and a stunning robot mode. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about the head to the point that there are replacement kits for the head. But I've never had a problem with that head. I, I kind of see what people are talking about. It's a bit wide and not very skeletal, sort of evocative of a skeleton, but not really. But I've always sort of liked it. I think it looks nice. It's a very stylized version of a skull head. <coughs> like, to me it's what a Cybertronian skull might look like, which looks better than what a human skull might look like on a robot from outer space. Now in this mode he has access to his katana here, which sort of forces its way into his hand since it can't slide in. Once you get it in there, it's in there pretty well. It's not going anywhere. And then, if you look at the turret here, if you slide this open, this little thing will pop out, and this is a little knife. What you can do with a knife is you can either put it into his hand, his other hand, like that, or, and this is pretty interesting, you can put it into the barrel for the uh, katana, turning it into a two-bladed weapon. And I like that. That looks interesting. That that looks interesting, and that's what I like. Interesting stuff. And overall, overall, a very nice figure. Now his articulation, it's not great, and it's not bad. His legs, because of all this kibble they have to navigate around, are really what are limited. His arms go forward and back. They can move up and down on this joint right next to his head and on this joint below his forward and back um, swivel. Then he rotates above the elbow and then he has a double hinged elbow. So his, his arms are very nicely jointed. His head can turn from side to side and that's it. Also his arms can move in a little bit too although I don't know quite how useful that would be. His legs go forward. They don't go back because they have this transformation black piece in the way. They rotate above the knee. And this is pretty neat because you can see like a bone spinning in there. And then he has a 90 degrees at the knee. And, and that's why you had to rotate these out of the way so that they would stay out of the way at the knees. And then his feet actually have enough posability to really compensate for the weakness of his legs because they're hinged up here and hinged down here. And his heel bit can go down to help get him into more stable positions. So yeah, overall, he has some weaknesses in his articulation, but he does everything he needs to do. And he's just, he's a great figure, a great design, and I really like him. The only really really big flaw this guy has is that well first of all this turret is a little bit too loose for my taste but when you um have the head down like that if you look in there you can see well you probably won't be able to see but well the turret's just on there on the pin and i can already see some stress forming around there and i think the turret on this guy is actually a little bit fragile at least on mine or it might eventually come undone. Now if that happens, I might be able to fix it, but I have no idea. So, that's a word of warning on this mold. Just be careful with the turn, don't pull it, and you should be fine. And that's all, thanks for watching.